I know there are a lot of people out there that are still butthurt about The Last of Us Part 2. I freaking adore this game. I can't believe it's been almost four years since we got it for the PlayStation 4. It rocked my world when it came out. I made a couple of pretty elaborate videos about The Last of Us Part 2. So I'm going to review this new remaster for the PlayStation 5, but not really get too much into the spoilers. Although I know it's a controversial story. Some big decisions are made. You're playing as different characters than you might expect. This is for those of you that are completely oblivious to the story in The Last of Us Part 2, which I understand isn't going to be a lot of you because there's been a ton of discussion out there. And I also understand and totally feel your frustrations that Sony and Naughty Dog have joined forces once again to bring us a game that is like fresh in our memory back out again. And I would totally, fully be on board with your hesitation to jump into this game if you've just played it on the PlayStation 4 or PS4 Pro. But Sony and Naughty Dog did something pretty remarkable here with this remaster. First of all, if you still own the first game, if you bought it for the PlayStation 4 or the PS4 Pro, or you've been playing it on the PS5, you can update to the remaster for 10 bucks US. And I think that's a pretty good deal when you factor in all of the elements that have been included in the package with this game. Now, first of all, the core game doesn't look that much different from what you would have got from playing the PS4 game on the PlayStation 5, which boosted it to 60 frames per second. It's really hard for me to play this game at 30 frames per second. It's so difficult when you start something in 60 and you drop it down to 30, even if you get the resolution bump, which you do in this game. Game. It just doesn't feel like a good trade-off. It just feels so sluggish going back to 30. So I played through in 60 frames per second, which I think heightens the intensity. And what's cool about the PS5 remaster is that you can also play this on variable frame rate television sets. So if you've got a TV that can go past 60 frames per second, to 120 or whatever you can put that VRR on and get all the benefits there I currently don't so I played it at 60 frames per second it looked beautiful to my eyes although the game does look more like a game than a masterpiece cinema moment like it did four years ago and the game was so beautiful on the PS4 and PS4 Pro there were real legitimate questions about why we were having to transition to a new console when we had games that looked this incredible and I felt that again, but I also could see some of the rougher edges. There's a little bit of aliasing in a couple of places, and some of the characters look a little lo-fi compared to the main characters and the way that the camera is in there and the way that the grain is applied. But that's not just what you get with the package with this game. There is developer commentary all the way through during the cut sequences and things where things kind of slow down and you're kind of watching what's happening. And you can hear from all of the key creatives that helped to bring this out to market, which is really cool. They've also added some lost levels, which are sequences that were cut from the game. And when you play through them, you're questioning why did they do all of this work and then cut it? Because there are some really heavy sequences that underline the psychological damage that characters have in this very complicated and very brutal experience. And I actually really enjoyed that. But the other thing that I really enjoyed going through these commentaries is hearing how filmic the whole process is to make a Last of Us experience. I guess any Naughty Dog game at this point and how much they are tapping into the emotional state of the player and how the framing of the scenes and where the camera is positioned and the way that AI on characters that you're, you're playing through an interactive element but you still want the AI to have this kind of cinematic purpose and every developer that we hear from in this commentary is kind of responding to that. So they're not just making a game so it's a fun game to play, and it really is, and we'll get into that in a second here. But it's also all about the emotions the experience evokes, which is so mind-blowing. And I think something that a lot of people that don't experience video games, and I, I pity those people, I really do, they don't have this appreciation or an understanding of how deep this discussion is and how entrenched in creativity these people are. These brilliant, brilliant people that create worlds for us, but they're also tuned in to the cinematic kind of language and really appreciative of other types of storytelling. 
and they're bringing all of that experience plus all of this fundamental technical know-how into creating something that again and i said this before when i reviewed this game the first time it transcends the boundaries of how we define a video game it really is a lot more than that it's fully an interactive mind trip of an experience that gets us to question our own addictions and our own sort of confrontations and the way that we deal with the enemies in this experience and the repercussions of that. It's so profoundly moving and heavy and it's hard to just kind of pack it up and go on to the next game, you know? Like I felt that when I beat it the first time. It's such a powerhouse of an experience. It really gets you thinking. And what's fascinating as well is that there's gonna be this behind the scenes documentary that's gonna come out for this and how the documentary was shelved during the pandemic because everything was just crazy then. And the fact that this game came out in the height of the pandemic is just so surreal. And so yes, I still adore this game. I love playing the Spider-Man games more, truthfully, because they're just more fun to experience. They're just so fun to play. And they've got great storytelling as well with the Spider-Man games. But there's not that heaviness, you know? And both Last of Us 1 and Last of Us 2 just hit me emotionally. And I understand if they're not for you or you've turned them off or you're not into the show, but I've been living in this weird haze. I mean, I would love the first Last of Us game for sure on the PlayStation 3, but I've been living in this weird haze with 2 and then the remake of 1 and the show. And like I've replayed these Last of Us <laughs> experience so much over the last four years during the pandemic. It's really crazy. And all of it has just been so artfully prepared. And so you get the lost levels, you get the core experience. You get some great extras like being able to play around with the guitar in free play mode and you get a bunch of different guitar sounds and you can switch out the character models playing the guitar, Joel and Ellie and also Gustavo Santa Olaya, I hope I'm saying the name right, who composed a lot of the beautiful music for these games. That's really fun to tinker around with and play. But I do wish, I'm talking about the guitar free play mode, that on the dial when you're strumming, you've got six different chords that you can pluck through or strum on and I wish that you could customize that and add the specific chords that you would want to play so you could actually craft your own songs or play tunes that you know. I think the, this actual guitar free play thing is going to get a lot of people picking up a guitar and seeing what, how they can play these songs, you know? They're going to start strumming different patterns with their PlayStation 5 controller and then they're going to go find their friend's guitar and just see if they can play something similar, which is really cool. I thought that was awesome. Of course, there are all kinds of skins and goodies to unlock and concept art, but the real star of this whole package and why you're going to want to spend the money, and I'm highly recommending that you do if you haven't played this or if you want to upgrade from the PlayStation 4 model, is that they've added a roguelike survival experience called No Return. And this is an incredible idea because one of the things that I'm definitely thinking about as I'm playing through the main story of The Last of Us Part Two is how sad it is that whole multiplayer concept as we know it, I mean, something might sort of arise from the ashes, but it's been killed by Naughty Dog and probably rightly so because of any of the live service stuff that may have tainted the whole experience and how much work that would have been. But these levels that they've crafted for The Last of Us Part Two are incredible. They're so fun to play around in and so what no return does is it gives us those levels again to engage with in a bunch of different ways you've got an assault mode where you're just trying to stave off a bunch of waves of enemies you've got a holdout mode where you're working with an AI companion and you're trying to stay alive for as long as possible there's a single player kind of version of that called hunted which is incredibly nerve-wracking and there's also capture where you're capturing different areas as well and what they've done for the structure of no return is you're kind of looking at a board with with all kinds of areas and strings attached and you get one run and you try to go as long as you can and you go back to the base and you can outfit yourself with better weaponry and better tools and items that you can take back out into battle but it's all incredibly nerve-wracking and all of these different areas are taken from these beautiful levels that are constructed throughout the game and so you complete the objectives in one area you go into another area and you try to get to the conclusion it almost looks like something out of Sifu or uh, Outrun it kind of reminded me of the Outrun map where you can kind of choose how you get to the end of the path. And then every time that you complete one of the areas, you go back into your headquarters and refresh and then start again. But once those seraphites or those wolves or those clickers get you, that's it, you're dead. You got to start the run again. 
And what's cool with this whole kind of loop is that you're unlocking new characters and each of the characters has their own arsenal and their own capabilities and their own strengths. Like Abby is very strong physically and so she's a great uh, up close and personal fighter. And there are also mods in No Return as well. In this one sequence I played, Abby could use her melee weapon and it caught the bad guy on fire, which was pretty crazy. And so there's all of this little tuning that you can do to re-experience these different arenas and areas that you got to play through in the main story campaign. So this whole package is absolutely marvelous. And it's also not out there at the full price that a lot of retail games are right now. It's a little bit less than that, 50 bucks US, if you haven't picked this up before. And I think that's a hell of a deal because you're getting an exquisite masterpiece of a game plus all of this extra content that celebrates the game but also helps you understand how much work it was to make this game. So I think this package is unbelievable. And I also think it's gonna, just like the main core experiences of The Last of Us, gonna influence a lot of game makers going forward. I love this series, I love this game. It's one of the best that PlayStation has ever put out there. And thinking about how The Last of Us Part II wraps up and, and its commentary on our obsession and our addiction to violence and its never ending circle, what that means for more, you know, in terms of a, a sequel to The Last of Us Part Two, There's so much damage that's done and so much growth that happens and so much looking inward about how this cascade of killing just doesn't end if you just keep it going and how horrible that is. Especially with these characters that we know in these two games, it really makes me question how the hell they're going to do that and have it have any emotional truth because of the arc that everybody goes through. I'm sure as a business case and with The Last of Us TV show going that The Last of Us Part 3 is almost assured, but yeah, that's gonna be a tough task for the team at Naughty Dog. But this, this Last of Us Part 2 remastered package is irrefutable in my opinion. Whether you already own the game and love it, I, you know, I'm not gonna recommend it if you don't love it, uh, or you haven't played it at all, you definitely need to check this out. I can't give it any less than a 10 out of 10.